All right. Well, this is going to be a fun one. And let's talk. I think this is going to be this is going to be probably a little painful one. This is going to be a super honest real one. And this is going to be something that we need to talk about a lot, right? Because I'm seeing some some major problems and that we need to fix. And it's up to us to fix because I wrote down a couple notes on this last night. You know what this feels like to me? And maybe maybe it's a little bit of a, a, a stretch on it, but it's not because it's a, a true feeling. This to me feels like March and April of last year, right? When we first got into the pandemic, um, actually 2020. When you remember when we all jumped on our Zoom calls and nobody knew what the hell was going on. Things were shutting down, people were at home. We were all going, oh shit, it's over. No one's gonna buy or sell anything until this thing all sorts itself out. We better hunker down. We're going through disaster plans inside the company. All families are doing the same things. How's our income gonna come? What's gonna go on? Where do we go? What do we do, right? Anybody remember that feeling? I sure do. Yeah, I think that's spot on. And then as a result of that, what did we do? We pulled up our boots and we got to work and we became the voice of reason for what's going on in the actual marketplace, right? And this is exactly the same situation. Now we've got, we've got issues. We've got rates have doubled this year. That's never really happened before at the rate at which it's happened. Let's be honest with this stuff. We've got stock markets in the crapper, crypto markets destroyed. Um, interest rates for mortgages have doubled. You've got inflation out of control. You've got a war going on in Europe. Um, whether it escalates or not, nobody knows. It's called uncertainty. And we have consumer confidence in the toilet. Let's just call it what it is, okay? So now a leader's job, which is you and us and our whole team, is to help define reality, right? That's, that's our job. So let's acknowledge what's really going on and let's acknowledge the fear factor that's in a lot of buyers' minds right now and let's appreciate it and let's realize it is what it is and what do we do about it going forward, okay? Because I'm already seeing it. I'm seeing people that have not been in the business. We, we kind of joked about it for a long time, but a lot of people have never been in real estate, right? They've been in order taking that happened to be in the real estate industry, but it really wasn't hard when the banks were giving away money at 2.75 and 3% and people could buy houses left and right and they made sense and they're appreciating 20% a year, it wasn't hard to talk somebody into doing that. Let's be honest, okay? So there were more people doing it than actually had to do because it made sense, okay? Now the question in the marketplace today is do things make sense? And for some people, the answer is no. For some people, the answer is yes, all right? And we have to come to terms with that and lose commission breath 100%. If you don't lose your commission breath, you're out of this industry. Buy, pack up your crap and go find something else to go do, okay? This is the time that true professionals are made. This is the time that people rise up. These are the people that totally bolster support around them and they build trust and trust as your dad say all the time, is the currency of the future, right? So this is your time to either blow yourself out of the industry or firmly solidify yourself as a leader inside of your marketplace. That's what's on the line right now. And there's no, there's no more serious of a tone that we need to take than what's going on right now, right? There's my opening preamble there. What do you see? Because you see it from a different lens, newer in the industry, from another business perspective. And we've seen this show, Not we've never seen this show before, but we've seen many, many shows and a lot of similarities in different shows. So you take our 30 years of experience inside of Century 21 Baggage, a lot more when you ha handle all the leadership team and the dads and everybody on top of it. Um, we've got it, I, we wrote in that email last night, You know, anybody can hold the helm when the seas are calm. Anybody could have been a real estate agent when the market was awesome. Anybody could be a team leader. Anybody could be a broker. Anybody could start a company because it wasn't real estate. It was order taking. 
So you're going to see a really interesting shakeout in this industry, which is very well needed. And you're going to find people who are professionals remain and thrive. And you're going to find the half assers get out. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. Just to make sure you become the professional thrivers. Right. So tell me what you're thinking here. Well, to touch on that, I actually, I do think that's going to happen. I think that is somewhat of a positive thing because I think when you look at our brokerage as a whole, right. And the agents on this call, we have a lot of high quality agents that are going to get even more opportunities because you are going to see the agents who don't know what they're doing, who aren't getting the training, who aren't engaging with their, whatever their brokerage is doing, who aren't taking their education to the next level, they're going to fall off, right? It's not going to be as easy as it was and deals aren't just going to fall into their laps. And so you're going to see that those that are actually doing what you all are doing right now, getting up, getting training, getting education, engaging, you're going to thrive and the rest are going to try and survive. And that's going to be a, a turning point, I think, for a lot of agents, which I think this industry is in desperate need of, to be honest with you. So I think that's one positive that's going to come out. On the flip side of things, listen, I think there, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, chaotic things going on many of which you just mentioned i do think though that it's all about the perspective that you want to take right i i heard a guy on joe rogan the other day talk about how if someone sat there and cussed you out in a positive tone in a language you didn't understand and was smiling while they did it you would probably sit there and smile back because you have no idea what they're saying, right? So it's not the actual words that are being said, it's your reaction to them. If I react positively, right, then I'm gonna stay positive. If I, if I hear those words and then I choose to react negatively, then I'm gonna react negatively. And I think the same thing applies with these external things, right? Whether it's a headline you're reading, whether it's a news giving you bad news, whatever it is, if we react negatively to it, it's going to be negative. But think about this. What if you didn't have the news? What if you were more like Craig and you literally did not go on social media at all, didn't see anything, and even took it a step further where you didn't read anything and you just went about your business like you always did? What would be different, right? Would your approach be different? If you just handled your business as if, tomorrow was no different than today and you just kept at it kept your head down and kept working what would be different right and I honestly believe that people who have the ability to do that who just put their head down and grind are going to survive this no matter what happens because it's a constant commitment to what you're trying to do and I truly believe that's a difference maker I, I think that we let these external forces, get inside of our heads and that starts to change our behavior. Now, are there little nuances? Are, is, are things really going to change? Sure, there are going to be things that we're gonna have to do differently maybe than what we're doing today. But the reality is the basics haven't changed. Whoever has inventory is gonna control the market, right? That's, that was true a year ago. It was true five years ago. It's gonna be true. Today, it's going to be true next year. No matter what the market does, if you have inventory, you're in control. Now, will the speed of which that inventory sells change? Probably, right? Will the price change? Yeah, maybe. Will the interest rate of what the buyer's paying change? Sure, in both directions. But at the core, this business is not changing. There are people who need to buy. There are people who need to sell. And if you control the inventory, you're going to be just fine. Now, if you're on the buyer side, you're going to have a little bit more of a challenge when interest rates are higher, right? That's where we just have to have that mindset of it doesn't matter because I still just need a buyer, right? And I need to do what I can to help them find the spot they want to be in. So I think it just, I, I don't know, to me, this is more of a mental test than anything else. And the stronger you are mentally, the stronger you're going to be as things shift back to a normal market. And that's just my perspective, especially coming from kind of outside of the real estate industry. Well, I think, I think you're, you're right on a lot of those points on this one. So 
consistency always wins, right? And, but, big but, we hadn't had to be very consistent over the last couple of years because there was so much business and it was going to come. Now, 100% business is not going to come at the rate at which it was coming before. It will not, it cannot, it is going to drop significantly and it has already dropped significantly. Those of you with inventory, you know your phone's not ringing like it used to. Now, now micro markets, of course, right? You've got the only house for sale in the school district. You're still gonna have multiple offers. That will always be the case, no matter what's going on, when you have good, desirable location, 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 and a great product. People will always want it, no matter what's going on in the marketplace, somebody wants to buy it, okay? So, but you're not gonna have 87 people that want it. You might have one. And it might take you a month to find them or two or three or four maybe in the future, okay? So that's the case. But the issue is our roles are changing is to total advisory role. And it's very tough to be an advisor without commission breath, right? But the only people that are gonna make it through this market are people that can give advice without commission breath. Because a lot of times the advice is gonna be, you know what, this really isn't a good time for you to buy right now. I wouldn't if I were you. Now, that, those are words that are so valuable and are gonna be appropriate for some, okay? Now, our job is to talk to people because listen, all they really wanna know, let's, let's boil out all of the noise. Let's just take it away. If I'm a buyer, which I am a buyer, I'm looking, I looked at property to go buy, right? And the only question inside my mind, I'll just put my I'm a buyer hat on for right now, is, is this a sound investment? Does this make sense? Are prices gonna crash? Is this thing gonna be worth less than what I'm paying for it? Should I buy it? I, I promise you, every one of those questions is going through my mind right now. Because maybe I wait, I can get a better deal. Maybe things will soften and it'll, if it go, this is an off market property that I found the seller for. I was very interested in it, a lot more interested in it a year ago, right? And then she wasn't ready to sell it to me yet. And then all of a sudden she calls me and says, hey, life's changing a little bit. I'm thinking about selling it. Do you still want it? I said, well, let me come look at it again. And then let me think about it. Now, a year ago, I wouldn't have, I would have thought for about three tenths of a second and already put it under contract. Okay. Right now I'm still thinking about it. This is the honest truth because it's not going to, I've got it. It's, it's different. It's a different scenario. Do I need to buy? I don't, I don't need this piece of property. I believe it's going to be a very good investment, right? Which is why I'm thinking about buying it, but I don't have to buy it. And if I don't buy it, I preserve cash. What can I do with that cash? A lot of different things. Whatever else I want that might give me a better return. So now my, my decision-making criteria is should I burn this cash right now? in a market that may be changing and maybe I can find something else that might be a better investment. So maybe, so what did I do? I hit the pause button. True story, hit the pause button. Now, will I still buy it? Likely, right? But I'm still questioning myself and I might not. I mean, I've typed in a couple of things on text messages saying this isn't the right time. Um, I'm not the buyer, but I certainly can help you find one and let me know, right? And then I deleted it because I'm not sure I don't want to buy it, but I'm not sure that I do want to buy it. And that's a totally different marketplace than we were in even six months ago. So I want you guys to recognize that that's what your buyers are doing right now. And many of you are looking to buy some stuff too, and you're doing the exact same thing. So let's acknowledge that. Let's appreciate that. Let's celebrate that. But let's not bullshit around and say, oh, well, you need to buy it. You're stupid not to buy it. It's going to go up 3% a year. What are you going to wait five years? And then you're going to pay 12% more. That's stupid. Dumbass. Buy right now. As soon as you start telling me that stuff, Buck gone, deleted, you broke my trust. I don't want you anymore. You've got commission breath. You're trying to force me into doing something for your own best interest. As soon as I smell that, you are in the history books. I want nothing to do with you ever again. You lost me, you lost my sphere, you lost my friends, you lost my $130,000, right? And this is my big concern right now because I think agents are going to take that pivot and saying, oh, well, you think this was bad? People used to buy at 18% interest. This is hell. This is great. It's historical rates. We're only at 6%. They should be a lot higher than that, dumbass. Quit your bitch and buy a house, you wuss. Right? Start that and watch yourself be broke. Okay? That's the issue. Well, well the fear you have there is pe when people get desperate, 
right? When it's not as easy and you're not getting as many deals as easy as you thought or have in the past, that's when people get desperate. And when people get desperate, speaking of agents, that's when you start having commission breath, right? This is why though, that I have tried over the last years to constantly say, I don't care what the market's doing. We need to have good behaviors, right? We should have been taking the advisor role every single day for the last two years, three years, five years, 10 years, however long you've been in this business. It's never changed. Now, was it easier? Sure, maybe the last couple of years, but the good agents, our top agents, they were still the advisor. They were still the ones saying, hey, maybe it's not the right time. What's, what are you going to do with the money? They were still asking those questions, right? And yeah. we were still telling you to ask those questions. And the reason being is because it's a lot harder to be that advisor when you know, when you don't have as many deals in the pipeline and that deal really matters, it's a lot harder, right? But if you've already created the habit, the behavior, that's just the way you run your business is you, you've been the advisor, even when it was easy not to be, that's the difference. And so if you weren't doing that, it's time to pivot. It's time to take a hard look in the mirror and say, hey, now it's time to get back to that because that was, should have always been your strategy. But if it wasn't, you, you're going to have to make a pivot here because I, I do, I agree with you. I think that is going to be crucial as we head into this regular market. And yeah, I just had this conversation this weekend because a, a kid on my son's baseball team is one of my best friends. They've been talking about potentially doing something and he asked me what I thought and they own their house outright. And I said, do you need to move? Like if you had to live in your house for the next, let's say 24, 36 months, would that be an issue? No. Okay. Well then let's have, we really need to investigate that because right now you have zero mortgage. You're going to pay more. You kind of missed the, they were going to mortgage that even if they sold this house, they were still not going to pay off the new house. So there was going to be financing involved. Rates are up. Right. And so we just need to have that real conversation about it. Now I think we could still get a nice amount quickly with multiple offers on their home based on location. So that's something we got to visit. Right. But at the same time, we have to balance that against now the fact that they are going to pay a little bit more in, in interest on whatever they're going to buy. And so if they don't have to do that and they own that house outright, does it make more sense to look at doing a rental on that house? Right. And are they okay with that? So these are the conversations we're going to have, but the reality is I, I can't just go to him and be like, yeah, absolutely. Sell it. Let's go. Come on. You should also buy over here. That may not make sense. And so we really have to weigh the pros and cons. But what you what you just did there, Mike, is the definition of somebody who will be successful in this business because your answer was not driven by your own needs, right? Your answer was let's explore, right? You don't have to. We've already established you don't have to. Now let's let's go through a bunch of scenarios to see if it makes any sense. Why are you even thinking about moving? Right? Where would you go? Why would you go? What would be interesting for you in order to make the move? Yes, you're going to pay. Let's be honest. You're going to pay an extra four, five, six hundred dollars a month if you buy right now. You just are temporarily, because in every recession, let, let's go through this for a second, real quick. What is really going on in the economy right now? Why why are we seeing rates go up? Let's let's go to the core fundamental fact. Because if we don't have confidence and competence, we're dead. So we have to understand the underlying reasons things are going the way they're going. The economy went out of control from an inflationary standpoint. Why did it go out of control? Because we had a global health pandemic where we had so many people die. We had total economies shut down. We had massive supply chain interruptions. We had, a, we had an economy that we've never seen before that completely shut down. We had, people, we had the government paying people to stay home. That's never happened before, right? We had the risk of dying when you went outdoors. You, you had a weird ass time period and the economy got shook, right? And then all of a sudden we had supply chain disruptions because factories were shut down and toilet paper wasn't available and all this crazy stuff was going on and we had a problem. And then when things started to open back up, we had so much pent up demand Supply and demand rules everything and prices went up. 
supply, demand didn't go down, so prices kept going up. Demand didn't go down and prices kept going up. Demand didn't go down and prices kept going up. And the Fed says, whoa, whoa, this is not sustainable. We got to pump the brakes on this shit. What do we do? We have to stop the demand. We have to slow demand. We have to, we have to find equilibrium in the market. What do we do? Well, the only thing we can do is make people hit a pause button because they were going full throttle on everything. Yeah, I'll pay 80 grand over. I'll pay 100 grand over this way. I'll pay 150 over this. That's not normal, right? So the Fed steps in and says, well, I'm raising rates. I'm slowing this party down. I'm putting the brakes on this train. I have to, or else we're going to have global destruct destruction from an economic level worldwide. So the entire economy globally raises rates, right? In a concerted effort with very good intentions to help us stop from going into global economic destruction. Raise the rates, slow it down. That didn't slow it much. Raising it again. Uh-oh. Raising it again. Guys, I'm going to keep raising them until you stop your buying. You need to slow down. I'm going to keep raising rates until we find a market equilibrium. That's just what's going to happen. And they told us. We know this is what's going on. But we have to internalize this one and understand it and be able to articulate what happened. Now, to stimulate the economy when we were in a global shutdown, they went the other route and they dropped rates, okay? For one reason, to stimulate it to saying, hey, get off your couch, dumbass. Look how cheap money is, go buy some shit, right? And please buy housing because housing is the largest economic driver in the entire world. And if somebody buys a house, it stimulates so much economic activity, painters, landscapers, kitchen designers, Home Depot, all the stuff, every Everybody makes money when people buy houses. So what do we do? Let's drop the rates down to like nothing. So everybody goes and buys a house. Uh-oh, that was too low. Everybody's now buying houses. We're in deep trouble. Plus now we have a millennial home buying demographic wave on top of a low inch. We created a monster here. We need to pump the brakes. We're in deep trouble. Raise rates, raise rates, raise rates, raise rates, raise rates. And demand is slowing. They did their job. Kudos, high five. Yeah, it sucks a little bit but it doesn't suck as compared to what we could have happened, which was a total global economic disaster, okay? So that's what's going on. So they're gonna keep raising rates. Probably, a, I wouldn't be surprised to see another 0.75 hike the next term, right? I don't, and they'll probably go too far. And then everything's a cycle. What happens when they've slowed the economy down? What do they do? They say, well, that worked. Oh crap, now we're in a recession. Oh shit, I didn't want, I was trying to come in with a soft landing. I tried to just raise them just enough to find that market equilibrium. Crap, we went too far. Now the entire economy is super slow. What are we gonna do now? Crap, well, I guess we have no choice. Lower the rates, everybody. Let's start the people buying again, drop them, and then rates will drop. And then if that doesn't spur on the economy enough, what are they gonna do again? They're gonna drop them some more. And then what are they gonna do? They're gonna drop them some more. And then what are they gonna do? They're gonna drop them some more until we get back to a normal market of supply and demand. It's just a weird balancing act of a seesaw, guys. That's all we're in the middle of right now. And we just have to understand to be able to articulate it. That's it, okay? Now, we're stuck in the middle. So is everybody else in the world, by the way. Right? If you sell chicken wings, your chicken wings have gone up four times in pricing also. And so you're bitching about your profit margin on your chicken wings. I have a lot of friends in restaurants. That's a real example of what's really going on. Okay, everybody has their own little sob story. We just happen to be lucky because we're in the fastest, larging, largest economic driver in the entire country is housing. Okay, so they mess with us because everything follows housing. Housing slows, economy slows. Housing speeds up, economy speeds up. So we're on the leading edge. Good thing is we're the last to go down. We're the first to come back. So let's at least look at it that way. So does that make sense? Yeah, makes perfect sense. So it's it's literally the way it's always worked. It's just unfortunately a lot of our agents, to your point, have never experienced it, right? But I think everyone confuses this and the recession that that you're saying may come, and it, it very likely may with the same type of recession that we had in 07, 08. And there's some major differences. And that's where 
that communication with you and your prospective client or your past clients really needs to be had, right? That's where the clarity needs to come in. Now, we're, we don't have a magic eight ball. We have no idea what actually will happen, but we do know what the indicators are showing will happen. And there's so much equity that has been built over the, over the last few years in each of these homes that for it to hit in 07, 08 is very, 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 very unlikely because even if values drop, they would have to drop so significantly. I mean, we'd have to see a 40 to 60% decrease before people get into trouble like they were in 07, 08. And that is very, very, very unlikely that you're going to see that. Right. And so it's just now it's a matter of having those conversations. But again, this all just comes back to being the advisor, being the educator. You know, we have our we have our kind of our motto, right? Empower, educate, and encourage. And at the brokerage level, that really is focused on you guys. But that also goes through to our clients, right? We want that to be a path through from you guys to our clients that are doing business with you. So you need to empower, educate, and encourage your clients, your past clients, your future clients. That, that needs to be something that's passed through. And that needs to be your focus. If your focus now is sales and not education, I honestly believe you're going to be in really big trouble over the next 12 to 24 months. There's no, no doubt about it. Because look, I started talking about this earlier. We need confidence. But you can't have confidence without competence. Okay? And fortunately, there's a lot of people in this industry that don't have a lot of knowledge, right? They were in a really good place at a, a cute picture on Instagram or a funny thing on TikTok was enough to get you business because everybody was buying. You just had to get in the way, right? Now, everybody's not buying anymore. Most people are not buying, right? They're just not. Nobody's buying unless they have to buy right now, right? Or they find something that really makes sense. That's it. You either have to buy or it really, really makes sense. There's no middle ground right now. We're in that uncertain period of, and stop, stop tricking yourself because it's not true. I mean, sh I'll show you slides in a few minutes, right? S showing activity is way off. Buyer activity is way off. Prices are not off, but this rate at which things sell are way off. And it's gonna keep that way because people that don't have to buy right now are not gonna buy right now until they feel comfortable with their buying decision. So our job is to figure out, what do I say? What do I do? How do I breed confidence into this transaction? How do I, how do I really advise my customer? And let's talk with their lender. Let's, let's really powwow. Guys, we gotta go to work, right? You gotta sit back and say, Mike, Courtney, let's chat. I don't know if this is the right time for you guys. And maybe it may not be, but I don't want a transaction from you. I want to be your lifetime go-to real estate advisor for the next 20 years, right? And you're going to trust me. I'm going to guide you. I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm going to show you all the data. We're going to make an informed decision to find out what's best for you. We're going to talk to my lender, Barbara, Joe, whoever the hell it is. We're going to do a little powwow. We're going to talk about what it takes to buy in this kind of environment. I'm going to show you what the equity is on your home right now. And I'm going to show you what kind of loan programs are out there. Now, we all know it's going to cost you more than it would have six months ago, right? But it still might make sense. It still might not make sense. But let's go through it all and let's figure out the debt to income ratios. Let's see what's a comfortable payment because we all know at the end of this little weird bubble that we're in, rates will come back down and we can always do a refi, right? So let's go through the reality and let's see if it makes sense for you right now. Take a deep breath and we're going to do what's right, whatever that is. That's our job right now. And at the end of that conversation, we've got to be fully prepared to say, based on everything we talked about, guys, you have to stay put. I, if it were me, I'd hang out where you are right now. Your rates are fine. You're comfortable in your house. Yes, you don't have the kitchen that you want. And yes, you'd love to have another bedroom, but you don't need it right now. Okay. So maybe it's time to just chill for a minute. Or, shit, that house is beautiful. And that's the one you've always wanted. You're gonna to have to stomach a few hundred dollars more a month, maybe for a year, maybe for two, right? In the long run. But you have so much equity in your home right now, plop it down in this one. And then your payments are gonna be X and we'll refi when the market changes. Let me bring in my friend, Joe, he's a mortgage lender. Let's talk about what the payments would be for you right now. And, and does that make financial sense? I don't want you guys to strap yourself in any way, but if it makes sense, let's do it. And if it doesn't, let's wait. Another house will always come up. 
that's the conversation that we have. Now, pay for points, okay. Luis had just brought up. I don't know if this is the right opportunity for paying down points right now. I don't think I would pay points down right now, personally. Now, I'm not, I'm not the be all on it, but I would not because I know that history repeats itself and I'm I'm a hundred percent confident that they will overshoot these this reaction and they will force the country into a recession. And the recession will be forced to drive rates down to get us out of it. Okay. That's gonna happen. So I why would I spend my money to buy points down today when I know I can refi a year or two from now without having to pay those points down and just refi later? Or maybe I don't care, I'm a more certainty type of person. I'd rather pay the points down now and just know the certainty that I'm comfortable with my payment now. I can still refi later. It's just a question of cash. Do you want to burn your cash now? Do you want to not? Do you want to burn it a little at a time or do you want to burn it all up front? Right? Those are the questions. Not that I'm right. I'm just saying personally what I would do. It just depends on everyone's situation on that point. Right? Depends on um, the individual. My my thing with this whole thing is, and, and I have to leave here in a second to hopefully go get cleared by the side doctor. Um, my last point, though, is to the conversation you just had. If you are not having those conversations or putting out content to advise your sphere or people that are going to come across it or that are doing searching for that type of content right now, you are going to lose. Okay, this is a communication game. This is a conversation game. We've always talked about that. But it's even more important right now because you are having people that are sitting there who may maybe do have life happening and are having to make a real estate decision, but they're scared, right? They're reading the headlines. They're hearing all this stuff. So what are they doing? They're searching out answers to these questions. Should I sell? Should I buy? What are the rates going to do? Are we headed into a recession? What These are things running through their head, right? And so if they're actively searching, and let's say you were their agent, right? Agent over here was my agent, and now I have these questions. They're not talking to me, though. They're not advising. They're not educating me. They're not saying anything. So what do I do? I turn to Google. I turn to Facebook. I turn to YouTube. I turn to TikTok. And I start searching, and I come across Jeff. And Jeff does a two-minute video explaining these very points right now is the time to think about this here's where you know using my experiences where i think it's headed here are the things to consider right and i'm like man yeah that makes a lot of sense who am i going to go with you think i'm going to watch jeff's video that's providing me with the education and answering the questions and concerns i have and then i'm going to go call the agent over here who hasn't been talking to me at all just because i did a past transaction with them at one point not going to happen it's not going to happen who am i going to reach out to him like yeah you know what jeff seems to know what he's talking about jeff just got me as a client that's what's going to happen yep. so if you think your clients aren't doing that or you're just resting on the laurels of hey no i've done two transactions with them in the last 15 years they're going to call me i think you're in serious trouble yep. so my advice is now is the time start talking, start being that voice of reason, reach out to your past clients, however you prefer to communicate, text them, call them, email them, do, do some moxie newsletters or email blasts through there, go on social, shoot a two minute video, kind of giving your thoughts of what's going on and do it regularly, do it consistently, make that part of your strategy right now. And I promise if you're the voice of reason as people go through this, they're go you're going to be the one that they trust and you're going to be the one that they call if you're not and you're sitting back because you're not sure what to say or you're just not willing to go do those steps i think you're in big trouble and i think you're really vulnerable to what's about to happen that's right um, that's i do have to head out into this appointment so i'll let you take luck, it from here good luck with your eye um thank you sir people wishing for a patch either way we hope you can see <laughs> we think the style points are going to be worth it uh, I made I made rock and eye patch from now on. I'm not sure. <laughs> nice. All right. Good luck with that. That's good. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So let's continue with the point that Mike was just talking about because we're going to do it from a company perspective. Talking with Craig, we're going to do a video about what's going on in the market and common fears. Right. It's it's about controlling the narrative. And if we tell people what they should be thinking, they're going to think what we tell them to be thinking. If we don't then they're going to listen to other people tell them what they should be thinking. And unfortunately, that's the media. And the media wants to do nothing but scare the crap out of people 
because the headlines are terrible, guys. They're 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 horrendous. It's the worst. It's the worst, right? It's it's the worst. Is it is the bubble? When's the bubble bursting? Bubbles bursting in some it's Prices are down. Showings are down. I mean, it would scare the crap out of buyers, one hundred percent. So we have to understand what's really going on there for a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a couple of slides with you. Um, if you're not part of this, you should be. Um, there's an organization called Keeping Current Matters. And they on uh, showing what's going on and sharing information. So what I was, um, bum, bum, bum. Got me on a good. what I was watching was this and I wanted to go through it with you guys. All right, so what we're talking about is why is this not doing what I needed to go do? There we go. All right, a couple slides. Mortgage rate surge is a 30 year fixed rate moved up more than half a percentage point, marking the largest one week increase in the survey since 1987. Okay. This, these are headlines, these are quotes about what's going on. They surged more than half a point in one week, is the largest increase. So, not only were they going up, now they're going up faster than they've ever gone before. The largest increase going on there. But let's put that into context. Okay. So, this goes back to this is the whole year. This is starting out in January. This is not good, but this is a reality, guys, real quick, okay? January, we had 3.22, then bumped to 3.5, three, then bumped to 3.9, then bumped to 4, then bumped to 5, then bumped to 6. This is the craziest part right here. We went from 5 to 6 in the course of a month, in a few weeks. This is why everyone, then they're trying, they're trying to do what it's doing, right? And it's working. So let's appreciate what it is, but let's put all of this into context. So look at that trend line from 3.2 to six in six months, never happened before. We've never had any of what's happened in the last two years happen before. So we need to put that back into context, okay? So this is very, very important to watch, watch what's going on here. That is the trend line. Now, what's gonna happen from here? I guess I can, we can ask our trusty little advisor here, what's gonna really happen with rates? I don't know. Then the reality is you don't know because there's so many different economic, different economic forces at play. We don't know. Now there's a lot of people saying it's not going to go up anymore because this was a gross overreaction, gross overreaction. And I hope that's true. Do I believe that? I don't know, but I don't think it's going to go up tremendously more because I think they're going to overshoot it and throw us into a recession they don't intend. So that's why I don't think, I think they've, they've already built in, the fact that the Fed rates are going to keep increasing and the mortgage companies just follow suit because, you know, they're not directly tied and mortgage companies decide what they want to do and they lend that. So this is what's going on in there. So this is from Chair, Federal Chair Powell, okay, about real estate. This is an important slide. I'd say if you're a home buyer, somebody or a younger person looking to buy a home, you need a little bit of a reset. This is Fed Chair Powell. Do, talking about how they're doing a reset in our industry. Thanks, dude, right? But we need to get back to a place where supply and demand are back together and where inflation is down low again and interest rates are down low again, okay? So a lot is said in that statement. They're doing it on purpose to bring it all back down again. That's good news. And this is from June 15th, okay? So this is Fed Chair Powell talking about they're resetting the whole thing to bring supply and demand back in equilibrium to bring down inflation and to bring down mortgage rates again. So if I was buying right now and I could stomach an extra few hundred dollars a month because I have a home that I love, it's not a forever stomaching situation. That's what I need us to make sure that we understand. Hey, listen, buy the house. You love the house. I've never seen your eyes light up. This is the view you want. This is the neighborhood you want. This is the school district you want. This is the layout that you like. There's the pool that you love. Everything's perfect. Granted, it sucks you're going to pay a few hundred dollars more a month than you would have a year ago, but things will settle back out. We can refi you later and we'll drop your payment down a few hundred dollars later. I believe, I don't know. That's what my magic eight ball is telling me. And that's what I believe, right? And I may be wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, but I may be. But this is what I would do if I were you. The house is perfect. Buy it. You can afford it. Stomach the little payments and we'll refi you out of it later, right? There's one conversation and there's the stat, the, the, data to back that up for a second. 
But we need to get back to a place where supply and demand are back together. Okay, that's where they're doing this. And I think it's a good thing because we were heading in a very unsustainable direction. We all know that. And it was going to end very poorly if things like what's happening now didn't happen. Okay, so let's appreciate what that is. Inflation needs to get down low and mortgage rates need to go back down low again. And that's what's going to happen. We just got to ride this. Right? And unfortunately, well, I should say fortunately, there's not a lot of other brokerages around that have the experience that you have leading you. Right. So we're going to be ahead of the curve. We're certainly calm about it. We know what to do. We've been through it all. Right. So when you have friends that are wavering in other places, grab their hand, bring their asses over here. We're going to help, we're going to help them too. So bring more people on, the more people come, the better it is for everybody. So this is the time for us to gather more market share. This is time for you to gather more market share and be the agent of trust or the brokerage of trust. So this one, low rates of the last few years were an anomaly. Okay. Let's, Please make sure the buyers know this. This was a freakishly low interest rates, right? It was a combination of frequently low interest rates and the Federal Reserve intervention in the bond and the mortgage-backed securities market, okay? That's what created that weird anomaly that we were in. They wanted things to people to get out of their house and buy stuff, so they had frequently low interest rates, right? And then the in infusion of trillions of dollars into the bond market is what did this. And they stopped doing that because they didn't need to do it anymore. That's what happened. So quantitative easing is down, is now over and the rates are going back up. It is what it is. Everybody should have bought more a year ago or six months ago, but then we didn't. Realtor.com quote, as rising interest, as rising inflation and mortgage rates bring US housing demand back from the 2021 frenzy, Realtor.com's newly updated forecast predicts inventory will grow double digits over 2021 and offer buyers a better than expected chance to find a home. This is good. Okay. This is good. So we have so many buyers that gave up. All of you have clients that you've written 10 offers for. They didn't get a house. They got discouraged and now they got priced out. And so they're very bummed out about the marketplace. Now inventory is coming. I'll show you slides on that in a second, but we are going to get probably 15% in increase in inventory this year. 15% higher than we are right now, which is very welcomed because it'll bring people back in. Now, yes, if you don't have money, you're not gonna be able to buy. And you may not be able to buy the location where you wanted before or the size house that you wanted before, but it's certainly always better than renting. And it might, even if it's not your forever home, you wanna buy the deductions, you wanna buy the tax rebate, you wanna, you wanna buy a home, right? If you can afford it, that's where we are right now. So let's talk about the economic slowdown for a second. It's coming on purpose. So it's, but the definition of recession needs to be talked about for a second. So this is a, a, a survey that three out of four CEOs say that we're gonna be in a recession in the next 12 to 18 months because it's being done on purpose by design. So do it, it's supposed to do that. They wanna try to bring a soft landing. It's not gonna happen. We've never had the forces that we have right now. So, but that's not a bad thing because during, throughout history, during the recessionary periods, interest rates go up in the beginning of a recession. That's just how they create recessions. They, they create the slowdowns by raising rates by design. Okay? But in order to come out of a recession, which we're going into, interest rates have to be lowered to stimulate the economy again to move forward. Right? So that's what we we're just talking about. There's that seesaw. Rates, rates, uh-oh, raise them, slow it down. Oh no, we slowed it down too much. Just drop them quick. And they're dialing, turning these dials and trying to make everything okay. We're just caught in the middle of what's the So historically, we've seen the repeated uptick in interest rates followed by lower interest rates. It's just how they have to, to dial up and down the economy. So we're just in that dial up period. I personally believe we're at the end of the dial up period because I think they're, they're, it's creating what they wanted to cre create, which is a slowdown. So if they go too much further, we're gonna have a very big slowdown. Then they're gonna have to counteract by dropping rates dramatically, right? dramatically, dramatically, whichever way you want to think about it. So what goes up comes down and it's by design. So we need the competence to be able to have this conversation with our customers, right? So what this one's talking about right here is mortgage rates and recessions. And so this goes down to the seventies where interest rates were going up and then when the recessions were coming in. So it's 30 year fixed rates are the ones in the blue and then the recessions are the, the green block. So every one of these charts that have gone up are the set recessions of the 1980, right? <clears throat> Interest rates went up to 16 and then 
And then as that recession ended, they dropped the rates all the way down. They dropped down 7%, they dropped down to 11, they dropped down to eight, and they dropped down again to sevens, they dropped down to six, they dropped down to three and a half, two and a half, and now we're right back up to six. So putting this into perspective, it's really not that bad, is it? <clears throat> because we've had some really good years leading up to the recession, um, leading up to the pandemic, that's doing what we're doing. So this is just facts, guys. It just is what it is, but it's designed to have people take a breath and realize that we had an anomaly, guys. Sorry you missed it, is what it is. But right now, it is what it is. And either buy or don't buy, but here are the facts. And this is you don't buy. We'll wait until you're comfortable buying. I'm not going anywhere, I'll be here. So this is just puts it in a chart form. In the 80s recession, it lasted six months. Mortgage rates went up six, they dropped from 16 to 11.75% to get it out of the recession. So there's a five point drop. And the 82 recession dropped from 18% down to 13%, a five point drop. Okay, last, that one lasted a year and four months. Early 90s, we had another recession, lasted eight months. Interest rates went from 11% down to 8.75. Woohoo! Look how cheap 8.75s are. In the early 2000s, we had another one that lasted eight months. <clears throat> Interest rates went from 7.375 down to 6.75. So they dropped to stimulate economy. During the Great Recession, the big one, Lasted a year and six months, right? From December 07 to June of 09. That's how long this one lasted. It was not fun, but how did they get us out? They dropped the rates from 6% down to 4.875%. Now, when we had our COVID recession, right? Which was a two month craziness, interest rates went from 3.75 down to 2.75 to stimulate the economy, right? That's what's going on. So now you're gonna see us dialed back up to six. And when it's time to, to stimulate it, they're going to drop them back down just like they did here, 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 right? So the, what's the moral of the story? Buy if you want to buy. Refi later. You don't want to buy? Don't. But prices aren't going to crash. Prices aren't going to drop. There's no fundamental in any market that says any possible scenario that prices are going to fall because we're not in that situation. This is not a housing scenario. This is a global economy scenario that's sorting itself out through inflationary controls. Okay. So you see how the mortgage rates are going down. <clears throat> Over the past five recessions, mortgage rates have fallen an average of 1.8% from the peak, um, the peak seen during the recession to the trough, right? So 1.8%. So that would drop us down to in the fours, right? Low fours again, which is great. And that's where I think we'll end up before we know it. I think, honestly, my perception, I think we're going to have a six month um, problem. That's my view on this right now. I think we have to realize that we have an issue and it's, it's a real issue. It's not a bad issue. It just is what it is. And I don't think prices are going down. I see nothing that says prices are going down. Are they going to go up a lot? Nope. But are they going to go down? Nope. So if you can afford it, do it and refi later. Okay? In many cases, they continue to fall after the fact because it takes some time to turn things around, even when the recession is technically over, right? Which is two quarters of the growth. Now this slide, I know you guys have seen this before, but it's worth seeing it again, that recession does not equal a housing crisis. In the 80s, prices went up 6%. 81 recession, prices went up 3.5%. 91, we had a little dip, down 2%. The 2001 one, up 6.5%. 2008, okay? 2008, not good. This was the great recession. This was the mortgage created bubble popping that we all know was, was smoke and mirrors, right? That was a problem. There, but that's the one that's really at the time houses dropped a lot. And then the 2021 prices actually went up 6%. The problem here is that we have what's remember confirmation bias from school and all that stuff. So your brain searches for the most recent support for what it wants to think, right? So if you really wanted to think what happened before is going to happen again, you say, Oh my God, the Great Recession, everything will happen, the prices are going to fall, everything people were buying houses 40 cents on the dollar. There were foreclosures everywhere. It was a wasteland. It's coming, right? But people are, some people are going to think that because of their confirmation bias in the brain. Not going to trap them. There's nothing, there's no economic force that's the same as the, the six or seven or eight time period. So this is just us to just know. So these are, these are five graphs that are really important. And if you guys want, we'll share these around too. So showing skyrocket. Look at these are showings. This is, this is, my favorite one of all of these. This is pre-pandemic demand, right? This is the this is what happened in you know, 2000 and 
one January, February, March, April, May, 2000, 2019, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Right? We have seasonal showings. We have summer, January, February. We have March and April. March and April are always the highest. They always are consistently nonstop. This is pre-pandemic. This is our market. This is our market. This is our market. Oh, crap. Some weird ass disease came around and shut down the global economy and it dropped. Right? In March. Look at that. From March of 138 to 80, over 50% drop of showings. The world was ending. Remember, we were all dying. You can't just air was going to kill you. You were dead. No one is looking at houses. Then all, all of a sudden realized, no, we aren't dying. Things are going to be okay, but I hate my house. So they started showing way more houses than we had before. And then way more than way more than, oh my God, something happened again. And it, it was called winter. Right? It always does this. And then, oh my God, we're coming into spring. Yes, yeah, so move, move, move. It's craziness. Pass me the joint. We're getting smoking high with this buying weird stuff. Winter. Oh man, we're not dead. Let's go buy some more stuff. Right, and this so this is what's going on for showings. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist <clears throat> to figure out this is an anomaly. What's normal? The gray part. So what should we go back to? The gray part, which is going to mean showings are going to drop significantly to get back down to normal. Shouldn't surprise anybody. And if it doesn't happen, it should surprise you because especially with rates doing what they're doing, we're gonna get back to which to the media will look like a massive destruction, chaos and terror, but it's just going back to normal. So our job is to talk about this one and say, it's all okay, it's all good. Because I don't know if you remember, we're crushing it before the pandemic too. You guys are killing it. We're having fun, five point something million home sales a year, five point million home sales, five million home sales, everything is awesome. It was awesome to hit six point something million home sales, but it was called an anomaly. And we're going to go back to five high fives, right? That's just what's going on. So high five for the high fives. They're coming back. So very important to know this and be prepared and talk to people that we're going to go back down to normalcy. Okay? Existing home sales. This is what's we were just talked about this one. This is seasonally adjusted rate. So 2017, we sold 5.5 million pre-pandemic, 5.3 million, 5.3 million. That seemed like kind of a normal. Then pandemic world, we had 5.6. And then we got into the, oh my gosh, let's throw 2% money on top of the pandemic. We popped it up to 6%. And now we said, uh-oh, out of control. Let's bring this baby back down. Let's go back to 5.6 million. And it should go down to right around there too, right? So that's just normal. This is what's going on here. So the whole, the total home sales forecast for all of this year is Fannie Mae says 6 million, NAR says 6.3. Mortgage Brokers Association, 6.5. Freddie Max is 6.7 million home sales total. So that's a lot. December to December, right? Forecasted. Prices, right? What are the prices? Home price performance. 2023, expecting a 9.3% increase of home values. That's good. That's unbelievable. That's three times normal, by the way. This year, goodbye. Bye, right? Now, next year, oh my God. Gosh, I could see the headlines. Home price and appreciation is falling greater than 50%. You're going to all die. No, you're not. It's going to 4% appreciation. That's good. That's normal. Right? So next year, we're going to have a normal appreciation. Next year, normal appreciation, 3 to 4%. Right? Next year, normal appreciation. Next year, normal appreciation. I hope you enjoy the anomaly. Anomaly is coming to an end. We're going back to a normal market, which means we need to work. Okay? So forecast is the interesting one. It's the last one that I want to chat about here. The forecast, updated forecast inventory. So 2022 original forecast is that we were going to have a 0.3% increase in inventory. That wasn't going to help anybody. Okay. Now we're projecting a 15% increase in inventory. Bring it on. Bring it on. Okay. But who's going to get the inventory? Those agents who actually provide value and provide trust and are visible. And that's either you or it's not you. And you get to decide that right here, right now, is are you gonna be the one that's gonna be in business? Because all of these slides, they provide really good value, but it still has uncertainty in people's brains right now. You have to have the inventory. You need to go get the inventory. You need to be the broker, the agent that people turn to for advice that's unbiased and not self-serving, right? 
sometimes it's not a good idea to buy. If you're really freaked out, let home partners buy the house for you. And then hedge your bet, baby. And you can always buy it if you were wrong. And you can always walk away if you're right. Okay. Or sit around. What are you going to do? You're going to rent? You're going to completely flush all of your money down the drain? That's dumb. Yeah, I know. So sorry. You can't live in Shady Hill subdivision with a four bedroom, but I can get you in a three bedroom. We'll get you in a four later, but get the write-offs, get the mortgage interest tax deductions, get the get it, take it, earn it, love it. Okay. Buy the damn house. If you can afford it, then we'll refi you later and you can keep it as a rental. Right. That's this is the advice that we need to be given right now as things are doing what they're doing. Okay. So that was the end of that slide for that. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to see if you guys have any questions on that because I know we threw a lot. Okay. Taylor Morgan, the beautiful Brenda, thank you for bringing this up. Taylor Morgan is starting to give 3% closing cost. That is brilliant. Craig and I were talking about this yesterday, right? Sellers. To combat this issue, issue, you know, they used to not have to do anything. The rules have changed, right? It was like, hey, I'm not doing anything. Pay me more. <laughs> now it's, um, hey, uh, you want to buy my buy my house? I'll tell you what, I'll give you three percent back in closing costs. Still get an appraise. How about I you buy my three hundred thousand dollar house? I'll give you three percent close. I'll give you nine grand to buy my house. Closing costs. That's what the new home builders, they're not stupid. They need to move inventory. They're publicly traded. If they don't hit their numbers, they're dead. Stocks destroyed. All the CEO bonuses are gone. Always watch the new home builders. Okay? They always lead what's going on. So when they start offering concessions, we better start offering concessions too, because we are competing with new homes. Okay. So great. I'm glad you brought that up. Definitely need to do that. Okay. Would I recommend an arm? Depends. How long am I going to stay in the home? What's the purpose of the home? How long do I want to hold it for? What is my interest rate? If it's really not that significant, if it's a hundred bucks a month or so different, maybe not. Maybe I prefer certainty. Maybe I might keep it longer than a seven year arm or a 10 year arm or five year. Maybe it's an Airbnb. Maybe it's a long-term investment for me. Maybe I want that certainty. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't feel like living in there for more than three or four years. Maybe I'm the guy who buys, fixes up and flips every two years. And an arm may, might make sense for me, right? So it depends on the advice that we're giving from their situation on that one, okay? And then I created screenshots. Do you think posting the slides is a good idea? Yes, absolutely, Pam. What, absolutely. I think you, you guys, every one of us should do a little version of what I just did to you, to your sphere. So you can just say, everybody, deep breath. Let me tell you what's really going on because there's so much bullshit being put out in the media right now. This is what's really going on in the marketplace. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I just want to be here to be your source of trust and knowledge. And my whole mission is to empower, educate, and encourage. And that's what I'm here to do for my marketplace. So if you are buying in Shady Hill subdivision, I want to be your resource. Okay. That's it. That's what we want to keep doing is just be that person along the way. So, all right. So very good. All right. 930 time flies when we're having fun. And I hope you guys got some value on this one. Guys, we got to get to work. You got to talk to people because they're not going to come calling you like they used to. We have to be visible. We have to make the contacts. We have to make the connections. We got to get to work. So have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Make this the best week you've ever had. And hopefully you got some good information from this. Thing. Thanks, guys.